Okay, welcome to this section 21 of uh, 22 videos on Rahula's Bodhisattva Ideal in Buddhism. This uh, extract from his chapter in Gems of uh, Buddhist Wisdom. So let's read it and analyze it. There are many Buddhas, both bhikkhus and laymen in Sri Lanka, Myanmar, Thailand, Cambodia, which are regarded as Theravada countries who take the vow or resolution to become Buddhas to save others. They are indeed bodhisattvas at different levels of development. Thus, one may see that in Theravada countries, all are not Stravakas. There are bodhisattvas as well. So what are the vows that the laity take and are they the same as the bodhisattva vow? Well, Damien Keown in the Dictionary of Buddhism refers to these as the trick. Triratna, you chant them and you're taking refuge. This is the triple gem, the three jewels, revered by all Buddhists constituting the nucleus of faith, taking refuge in the Buddha, Dharma and Sangha, the three refuges. Well, that's not the same as the Bodhisattva vow. Uh, to, to return to every realm of pain till all beings have achieved enlightenment, if you take the vow in Shanti Deva's version. Now, the vows of ordained Buddhist monks and bhikkhus, are they the same as the Bodhisattva vow? Well, no. Lots to talk about here on the ordained vows and stages of the Arahat path. The Sangha is central to Theravada Buddhism in the context of Buddhist monasticism. One who enters into a monastic life should, for all purposes, aim at the extinction of the three root causes of suffering, dukkha, uh, Ignorance, aversion, and greed, the three poisons, in order to put to an end the cycle of rebirth. Hmm. So far, it doesn't sound like the Bodhisattva uh, vow. In the ordination ceremony, Yupa Samta, uh, which makes the Theravada monk, is actually a legal act of the Sangha in Buddhist countries, containing the Buddhist monastic rule, the Vinya. Monastics shave their heads to show their unattachment, or wear robes. This is the the virtue of renunciation in the shade of yellow or orange or ochre to study they study buddhist doctrines observe particular numbers of precepts the 10 precepts not just the five or more even depending on their religious advancement practice and meditation spread the dharma and the buddhist teaching again none of this is required in the, in the bodhisattva doctrine in the ordination ceremony one needs a sangha of at least five monks one of whom must be a knowledgeable senior monk at least 10 years who will be the candidate's preceptor the upya jana the preceptor will be responsible for that candidate throughout his monastic life and the candidate should in turn take care of his preceptor as if it were his father well that's nice and that's a bit compassionate but that's not the bodhisattva vow thus the ceremony continues with the candidate choosing his preceptor and the preceptor agreeing sounds nothing like the bodhisattva vow the candidate is then briefly instructed about the sermon and given a new name, a monk's name, so to always remind him of his new life's purpose. He's sent to stand outside the gathering of monks, and then two senior monks are chosen to go out, question the candidate on his suitability to be a monk. They ask him if he has any infectious diseases. Well, huh, can't be a bodhisattva if you've got infectious diseases, apparently, if he's a human being. <laughs> to prevent serpents, ghosts, nagas. A man, a free man, to prevent someone on the run from the police without debt, free from government service, that he has his parents' consent, and that he's over 20 years of age, that he has a bowl and robes, and that he's chosen a preceptor. Having successfully examined the candidate, the senior monks return to the gathering of monks to inform the monks of the examination, then recall the candidate back to the gathering. The candidate is asked the same questions again within the gathering just to make sure. The eight re prerequisites are allowing the monastic include the yellow ochre, ochre robes, the loincloth, the upper inner robe, and the large top robe, the alms bowl, the razor to shave the head, the needle for mending clothes, the water strainer, and the cloth girdle. These eight re prerequisites of monastics and some additional items like a ceremonial fan and a shoulder bag for traveling are normally donated by the lay community as acts of merit. Along with food, medicines, and objects for daily use, none of this sounds like the Bodhisattva vow. Making merit is at the center of the Theravada Buddhism and shapes the interaction between the Sangha and the laity. You've got to make your own merit. No heavenly Bodhisattva can transfer merit. High levels of merit making are regarded as a sign of peace and happy relationships and prosperity within the community or 
for the entire country. None of this is the same as the Bodhisattva vow. Sorry, Rahula, it's not the same vow. So do Theravada vow to save others, as Rahula here is suggesting? Is he accurate? Is he being clear? Well, yes, at times they're compassionate, but this is inconsequential and after the fact, possibly even a distraction to the true task of Theravada seeking the individual path to Nibbana. So no, the focus, sorry, Rahula, is, or the highest aspiration of Theravada is not the Bodhisattva vow. The meditation practices it prescribes in four stages, the Arahat path, cannot be conducted to life of helping others. They just cannot. So is Rahula right, better accurate, that they're indeed Bodhisattvas? Let's just highlight a bit of this. I haven't done it. And then he goes on. Indeed, Bodhisattvas at different levels of development. No, no one is the king or the historical Buddha, as Samuel's organs, other than the king or the Buddha. But there might just be someone who's doing it all on their own, like, like the Buddha did, as a private Buddha. But this is kind of grasping at straws. Essentially, someone focused on the teachings and meditation is not living a vow to help others. So is Rahula right or better accurate that they're in, in Theravada countries, they're not all Stravakas and they're not all Bodhisattvas in Mahayana countries. Well, the majority kind of are. There's a few atheists, of course, in both countries, but this is again grasping at straws. It's a, a thin argument. And, under, and it's an attempt at undercutting the idea you can be a novice at taking the Bodhisattva vow. Theravada countries, by the way, to highlight it here, Theravada countries is easy to research. It does hint at the issue of patronage, which all Buddhists have sought. This was section 21.